in 2007. But the stock is working. The stock's up 20%. The S&P is flat on the year. There's clearly some outperformance here. So one of the things, you know, I was thinking about, look at that chart right there. I mean, that's about as good as it gets. I don't want to get uh, Stefan Carter's uh, toes here or anything like that. We're going to get to him in a little bit. But that thing, you know, that, that, that 70 line, if it gets through there, it can really start going. And the other thing about that chart, it keeps making higher lows and higher highs. It looks like it's going to break out. That said, okay, I have a trade looking out into the fall on Caterpillar. Okay, the stock is extended, no doubt about it. And in this market, we're not seeing runaway breakouts. I think this stock has to consolidate a little bit. But one of the things I want to do is think about if you're long the stock, think about stock replacement. Okay, so you tease that trade, 35 cents to make five. Again, okay, you're actually, selling the stock and you're replacing it with another. Yeah, company. well, listen, <laughs> here, here's the thing: if you own the stock at 69 and a half dollars, you know you have unlimited risk to the downside. Okay, so what we like to do is look for some trade structures where you don't have that same risk profile. So one of the things I want to do, I was thinking about risk reversals, I was thinking about call spreads, well I'm going to put it all together here, okay? I want to look to November because it captures their next earnings cycle. These guys gave great guidance for the second half, that's the next catalyst. People are going to be looking for those Q3 results and the Q4 guidance, and this captures it. Okay, so I want to buy a November 70, 75 call spread. I want to pay $2.20 for that. I'm paying uh, five bucks for one November 70 call, and I'm going to sell one November 75 call for 280. That costs me 220. It seems like a lot to pay 220. It's the best case scenario with a stock 75 or higher and make 280. Not a great risk reward in my opinion. So one of the things I wanted to do is look at a put strike that I felt comfortable selling to the downside. And so what I did was I looked at the November 60 put that I could sell for $2.35. So if I take in the $2.35 credit for selling that put and I pay $2.20 okay, for that call spread, I've effectively created a situation where I'm taking in a credit. My best case scenario is in November expiration, the stock is above 75, I can make $5.15. I effectively get long right here at the money. Right. Worst case scenario, I get long down 14%, at 60 bucks. Uh, I, have to, I have to make a point. I mean, you're talking about stock replacement. Actually, it could also be considered a stock substitute because, quite frankly, if you're considering right now, you've seen the results, things look good, you're seeing a lot of other positive results from industrials, you might be thinking, I could get in here and buy some stock. There still is some other news coming out here, folks. This is one way that you could do it instead. It's another bullish play on the stock. And as you pointed out, I mean, you're going to get long this thing down 15%, so you do have the opportunity for immediately participating 10% to the upside and getting long down materially lower, and I think that's a good way to play it. Well, and that's, I think you make a great point, is that the stock is right at that uh, long call strike, which is really important. Another interesting thing, this uh, put strike, 60 put strike, that's the 200-day moving average for Caterpillar, so something like just apocalyptic would have to happen for it to fall below 60. So, you know, Dan doesn't pick these strikes just out of thin air. This, these strikes make a lot of sense. <laughs> you consult the charts with Carter Work Mike. <laughs> <All right. laughs> if it's Friday, it must be time to play stocks versus options.